Now it really is book prize season, what with the Women's Prize for Fiction, the Man Booker International shortlist, the Walter F. Scott long list, and now me talking about the Stella Prize for Women's Writers 2018. Hi, I'm Leah, and welcome to Hide and Seek, and welcome to my reaction to perhaps the most diverse literary shortlist presented this year. Now please stick around to the very end of this video because I have a wonderful announcement and a fantastic giveaway to go along with that. Now I've telegraphed loudly and widely to anyone who will listen that I do believe that Terra Nullius Claire G. Coleman will win this prize. I'll link my full review up the top and link it down below as well. I wish I could keep rabbiting on about this but you're all sick of it so I will put it aside. I have four of the other five books here with me today. The book I don't have, This Life to Come by Michelle de Cresta. I've had a mixed relationship with Mr. Cresta in the past, loved one book, really did not love another book, and I'm on the reserve list from my library, but I'm about fifth or sixth on the list, and I just haven't wanted to take the plunge and buy this book. The other two I have picked up from my library. One I am about 100 pages into at the present. The Enlightenment of the Green Gauge Tree by Shukufi Azar. Now this reminds me a lot of say Gabriel Garcia Marquez in that it is a sweeping family saga with a thread of mythical fantasy woven into the story. Instead of being set in South America, in this case the story is set in Iran post the revolution of the late 1970s. I am very much enjoying this book. I don't read a lot of mythical type fiction like this, mythical realism, but I am very much enjoying this. This is my sweet spot, enough of a family saga, family drama to entice me and just the edge of magic and mysticism threaded through the story. I'm very much enjoying this. I don't think it's enough to pip Terranalius at the post, however I think it is a wonderful addition to the shortlist and I'll definitely pick up anything else this author presents. The other book I've picked up from the library and I haven't started yet and I will as soon as I finish The Enlightenment of the Green Gauge Tree is An Uncertain Grace by Chrissy Nee. Now this book, just flicking through and reading some of the pages and paragraphs throughout the book, not quite a page 112 tag but just experiencing some of the language before I dive right in. Chrissy Neen reminds me a lot of Kirsty Logan in her tone and style of writing. Not saying it's a copy or anything like that, it's definitely not de um, derivative. It is just that sense of style and that awakening. And even the cover here evokes very much a lot of Ms. Logan's work with the cool blue ethereal vibe to the cover here. Uh, this story tells of what is a family? What is reality? A gender fluid type of story. I'm very much looking forward to diving right in here. I think this will be an interesting choice and again a really diverse story and a wonderful addition to this shortlist. Now of the two books I held up before I'll talk quickly about The Fish Girl, Mirandi Rewo. I read this last night, a fantastic novella based as the alternate viewpoint to a W. Somerset Maugham short story called The Four Dutchmen. Now in the Maugham short story a group of four Dutchmen almost take, steal, a Malay trollop, a young girl, and she becomes the cause or the reason why these four Dutchmen in the East Indies have this falling out and two of them end up dead. Now this is a beautiful take on that story telling the alternate point of view. She's not a Malay trollop, she's not a tart, a slut, she is a small little girl taken from her fishing village to be a kitchen maid in a large Dutchman's house and how she's treated almost as a commodity and she 
tells an amazing story. This is vivid and lush in its description. For just over 90 pages, I was hook, line and sinker in this story. I would love to see this as a movie. I think it would make a fantastic Australian, Oceania, Southeast Asian joint production. There's so much vivid imagery, a wonderful story, a feminine female story, which I think would tell a different point of colonization and a story we do need to hear. I don't think this will win purely based on its size, not on its skill or its merit. Generally, the winner of the Stella Prize is a bit meatier, a bit more substantive, a bit more impact to it. However, for such a short novella, this is amazing, and I will look for anything else Mirandi Rewo will write, because it is brilliant. I do believe it is available as an ebook format that you might be able to access in places other than here in Australia. Check it out if you can. It is just wonderful. Now the outlier for me, and one I am very surprised I own, is Tracker by Alexis Wright. And yes, that is more than 600 pages of almost academic biography. When I unwrapped this for Christmas, because John gave it to me, I'm going, why? What, what makes you think I want to read an academic textbook? Now, yes, Tracker Tilmouth is a very important Indigenous uh, political figure here in Australia, but this is not my general fare of books to choose. And he's going, but it's the one you picked now every year because as Christmas falls during summer here, our Christmas book catalogues are often disguised as summer reading guides. And I'm very good at picking the ones I want or circling or crossing out the ones I don't want. And so John is usually pretty good at picking the book out. And so he went rabbiting and found the catalog that I had written on and going, see, this is the one you wanted. And then it came back to me. I was on perhaps the most boring teleconference ever for work. And I'm just doodling on whatever page was in front of me, not paying any attention to what I was actually drawing on or scribbling on. But somehow I'd managed to create this almost perfect garland of love hearts and stars and flowers and squiggles that perfectly centered around Tracker by Alexis Wright. So I have this book. Now, it doesn't mean I am not going to read it. In fact, I've been dipping in and out of it for my Harder Conversations videos that I'm doing with respect to Indigenous culture and Indigenous conversations and writers and readers here in Australia. Now, it is very much a biography of a single man. It points specific times and places in Australian culture. And that is perhaps the strength of the Stella Prize, that important subjects and important writers can make a shortlist that is diverse as short stories and other speculative fiction. I'm not... Um, going to think this is going to win. I think it would be a huge shock if it did win. Alexis Wright has been on the shortlist before for her fiction work, both of which I've read Carpenteria and The Black Swan. She's very much a confronting author that tells quite a um, Australian story in such a strong, vivid way. I like her work, but they're the types of things that have to have a gap between each of her books because they are just so confronting in nature. I think that's all the books. The only one left is, of course, my pick, Terra Nullius. So we will see. The prize is announced on April 12. Now, just this week, I've hit 500 subscribers, which is amazing considering I've only been doing this since early November last year. I'm really shocked that 500 people have taken the time and energy to press subscribe. Now, to celebrate that and to celebrate the Stella Prize, I'm going to send one of the shortlist books to anybody and to anywhere in the world. Now, there are two options here. You can take the my pick, which would be Terra Nullius, and I'll send you that book. But if that doesn't sound like the book for you, just let me know which book you would like to receive. And as part of that prize, I'll add some other Stella Prize goodies. I've got some postcards and bookmarks and a little duffel bag. I'll also fill the box with some Australian chocolates and goodies so you can really get that whole Australian sense and that whole Australian vibe. Now, Stella Prize have no idea who I am. This is not affiliated to them in any way. This is just me with some books and some merchandise that I have at home and I would like to share with somebody else and hopefully they will enjoy and experience the wonder that is the Stella Prize. So thank you for watching and have a fabulous day.